broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Scott Earhart here with Insurance Agency Marketing Services. Thank you all very, very much for taking some time out of your day to join us. We really do appreciate you uh, you giving the, us this time. I think uh, what you're going to see here today, um, you're going to find very, very valuable. Uh, we have Mr. Mac Campbell, our RVP with Athene, on the line with us, and he's going to go through a presentation going through uh, – Index 101, the design of index allocations, and kind of the overall view of the marketplace. As I'm sure many of you have seen, there's been a rash of rate changes due to uh, a lot of different uh, economic factors. And we put this, to, or Mac put this together to kind of explain what's going on and and why things are happening uh, as they are. So I'm really excited about it. Mac, can you hear us? Uh, yeah, Scott, I can. Loud and clear. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for your time. Before I uh, before we hand it over to Mac, I'm going to go through a couple of housekeeping items and a few introductory slides, and then we'll we'll get going with it. Uh, the first thing that uh, you're going to, or the most important thing that you'll hear from me today, and our first housekeeping item is the top right hand uh, corner of your screen. That's our phone number. It's 800-255-5055. If there's any questions or anything we can be doing here at IMS to help you live for fixed annuity markets, please. Don't hesitate to give a call. We'd absolutely love to be chatting with you. Uh, second housekeeping item, our polling questions. Uh, throughout the presentation today, I'll launch two to three different polling questions. Uh, just simple yes or no button clicks. If you'd be kind enough to, uh, uh, to participate in that, I'd really appreciate that. And then final housekeeping item or questions. Mac and really the entire culture at Athene is a very a culture of transparency. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions out there. Uh, Mac will do the absolute best he can to get those answered for you while we're live and in session. So um, if you have any questions, anything pops up in your brain uh, throughout this presentation, don't hesitate to type them in. We'd love to get them answered for you. Moving on to a few introductory slides. The first slide I want to talk about um, are our business builders. Just highlight a couple of our top programs. The first one that you can see there is the referred producer program. Our business here on the wholesale side of the industry very, very similar to yours uh, there in the field in that one of the best leads we could ever obtain is a referral uh, from one of our valued clients or you, our valued advisors. Uh, so we want to make it worth your while to refer individuals to us. When you refer another advisor to us and they pick up any license through IMES, uh, we're going to send you a $50 thank you check. Now, where the real money uh, gets involved is as that advisor writes business, you're going to receive a 20 basis point override on that business. Steve Murray and Charles Hiring, our ownership team, cut those checks at least quarterly. And, you know, we can sign checks for thousands and thousands of dollars at a time. So uh, it can be very, very lucrative for you. If you can think of any advisor out there that, that might benefit from doing business with us here at IMES, uh, please type their name into the questions box. Feel free to email me their information, scott at imesinc.com or... Uh, when we call to follow up, just let us know uh, who they are. We'll do the best we can to get them uh, recruited over to us here at IMES and uh, hopefully get you on the way to earning some referred producer dollars. Now, below that is our most popular business builder program in marketing reimbursement, and rough numbers on that are for every $100,000 in annuity premium you place through IMES, we're going to put $100 into your marketing reimbursement account. What makes this program so popular and so lucrative is that we put very, very few restrictions on this account. We really do think of it as your money. So what I mean by that is we're not going to tell you you have to roll your account out at any certain time. We're not going to put a cap on how much you can earn in that account. And, and to be honest, we put very, very few restrictions on what you can use this account for. Basically, what we want you to do is, is know that we're partnering with you in growing your business. So if you go out and have a marketing expense, send us a receipt. We'll hopefully cut you a check that same day to help you offset that expense. If you'd like more details on how the program works or if you want to know what your balance is in your marketing reimbursement account, just shoot me an email and we'll get that information for you. Moving on to new producer builders. This screen is geared towards individuals who are new to IMES or uh, if this is your first introduction to IMES, you are eligible uh, for this program. It's all based on production within your first 180 days of being licensed. And as you can see, there are three great levels to qualify at. And inside of each level, some really, really 
uh, nice rewards, uh, cash bonuses, business building tools, personal perks, all available to you. Uh, if you'd like to have a conversation about what we can do to help you get to the level you want to achieve, just let me know. That's a great conversation to have. Back office support. This slide is all about who we are here at IMS and the core of how we were founded 30 some odd years ago. And that's helping our advisors work smarter, not harder. And we do that with great business building tools and resources. If you've been out to imesinc.com, uh, you can see some of those great resources, our sales resource library, uh, the quote engines, the um, uh, access to the annuity grid, the life grids, things of that nature. Of course, we're here for you with case design assistance and life and annuity quotes. Uh, we've got a marketing staff with a ton of experience and a ton of expertise. Uh, definitely help you find the proper product and the proper design uh, for your clients and prospects, and we'll make a guarantee to you that we'll get you um, we'll get you out the illustrations you need within 24 hours. Forms at your fingertips. A couple ways we can do that for you. You can always call us at 800-255-5055, and we'll get those forms right out to you. Or many of our forms are going to be available on our website, as I mentioned, imesinc.com. Submission to commission support, uh, Amber Williams and our entire new business team do such a great job there. We will scrub your apps for you. We will submit them for you. We will track it through the issuance process to make sure that it's getting issued properly and as quickly as possible. Amber and her team do such a great job. I tell you, if you have not used our, our new business team, uh, submit your next app through our office. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how much um, how much quicker you'll get that app issued uh, because of the efforts of those individuals. Top sales expertise and coaching. Uh, I'll get into this a little bit more here in a couple of slides, but we do have great, uh, great sales coaches available throughout the country that are here to help you um, and, and are excited to help our advisors. And then the final, final uh, back office support item, paperless contracting. We all know the pain of signing up uh, with a new carrier, filling out that licensing agreement. We have added the Efficient Forms platform uh, into our firm. So basically what that means is we're only going to ask you to fill out licensing once. We'll upload you onto that platform. Anytime you need to add a new carrier, all we need is your authorization. We'll click a button on your behalf, and that process is started. Really, really saves a lot of time and, and definitely will help you to work smarter and not harder. Creative Marketing Solutions, we do have an in-house creative team here at IMES, uh, headed by Jacob Tedlock. His team does a great job. If you're looking for any type of personalized marketing, we can certainly help you with that. We've got a lot of turnkey solutions that, that we've already built out that we can impose your information onto and do that for you very, very quickly. Of course, we're here to help you with branding and agency solutions. I'll say this, if you haven't created a consistent brand with a logo, um, and information, uh, I think you really should. The consistency of branding will pay dividends, especially if we look uh, long-term. We can design that logo for you. We can get it imposed on business cards, uh, brochures, stationery, pretty much anything you need. We can get that done for you. And then, of course, digital solutions uh, with online uh, marketing projects. Uh, if you need a website or you need a website overhaul, we can do that for you. Uh, we can help you with social media, email marketing, online newsletters, a lot of things that they have a, they have great expertise in. Um, if you haven't had a conversation with Jacob or Sean or Aaron, I'd tell you call into 800-255-5055 and ask for IMS Creative. Uh, they'd love to chat with you about what we can do to help you increase your, your brand awareness. I've mentioned our website a couple of times in the presentation today, imesinc.com. If you haven't gone out and created an account, I'd encourage you to do so as soon as we're done with this webinar. A lot of great things for you out there, sales tools, term quote engine, uh, forms online, links to carriers, news grids, LTC grids, annuity grids, all sorts of stuff available to you there, and we're constantly adding to it. Uh, we did just add an E&O partnership maybe a year ago, so if you when your E&O needs to renew, let us quote that for you. Uh, probably save you some money there. Great, great stuff uh, out there. Definitely check out imesinc.com if you're not already active on it. Retirement Analyzer. Uh, this is another sales tool that we make available to our advisors. Um, what the Retirement Analyzer is, is a holistic analysis of your client or prospect's current financial uh, status and a projection on how long that will last them 
into their retirement years. Now, beyond being an analysis of that, I think it's a great closing tool because with a simple click of a button, you can show the client by implementing the product or the strategy you're recommending how much longer their dollars will last into their retirement years. Very, very simple, easy to understand graphs and charts for clientele. So uh, we've had a lot of success with it, find it to be very worthwhile. Uh, Marcus Solar is our point man for the retirement analyzer here in our office. He is an absolute expert in the software. We can get you a 90-day free trial. We can get you a bunch of different trainings on how to utilize it, and Marcus is there to help you step by step. If you'd like more information on the Retirement Analyzer, just give Marcus a call. He'd certainly love to chat with you. IMS Wealth Management. As I talk about IMS Wealth Management, I'm going to launch our first poll of the day. And basically, I'm asking you if you'd like to learn more about IMS Wealth. Um, if you click yes, you'll receive an automated email, as well as a call from Mike Hansen, uh, one of our onboarding specialists, just to chat with you a little more in depth about what IMS Wealth does. We opened IMS Wealth, oh, I don't know, probably two years ago, and we opened it to uh, under the the concept the concept of helping our existing advisors add assets under management into uh, into their offerings. So we really created some great training uh, partnerships out there to help advisors pass the Series 65 exam. Uh, we've definitely got a great platform for investments and great technology partners that are out there. And we wanted to make sure that we had an extremely competitive fee structure. And we've achieved all those things and seen great organic growth uh, internally with it. But one of the things that surprised us was how attractive we became to existing uh, existing IARs uh, because of the technology and the fee structure for both them and the clients. So uh, we've seen great growth there. What I'd tell you is if you are considering adding assets under management into your, into your offerings, click yes, have the conversation with Mike. And I'd also tell you if you are an existing uh, IAR to click yes, have the conversation with Mike. Let us show you exactly how competitive we are uh, in that market space. That being said, I'm going to move on from this uh, this slide. If you haven't taken the time to click yes or no, if you would please do so, certainly would appreciate everyone's participation there. All right, thank you everyone. And moving on, I hate to do this, but I'm going to launch two polls right back to back, but I think the second one is a um, Oh, actually, I'm not going to launch two polls right back to back. We wrote, loaded the wrong poll. My apologies. So I'm just going to talk about the Life and Annuity Academy. And if anything I talk about here uh, is of interest to you, just let me know. Um, this is a timely slide because we are accepting applications for our final Academy of 2018. It will be September 18th, 19th, and 20th. And we're actually going to partner with uh, Mac and Athene for this and hold it at their home office in West Des Moines, Iowa. Um, what we do in our Life and Annuity Academy is these are all expenses paid. We'll fly you in on a Wednesday, have an evening session that Wednesday, uh, have a full day Thursday, have a morning session on Friday, hopefully get you on a plane uh, back home around, around midday and home in time for dinner is our goal. What we do in these academies are we will bring in our internal staff. Uh, you'll meet myself, you'll meet uh, Jacob Tedlock, you'll meet Amber Williams, Charles R. Hiring, um, several other people uh, to talk about the tools that we provide here at IMS and what we do to support you and help you grow your practice. Uh, of course, Steve Murray and Charles Hiring, our ownership team will be there, which I think is a really unique thing. Uh, I, I think it's really great that our, our owners are actively involved in our day-to-day -day business. Um, the decision makers will be there and they're going to take an active interest um, in what your needs are and what your business model is. Um, so definitely a, a strong, strong and unique thing there. And what I think is the most beneficial about this is we will bring in uh, at least four of our sales coaches from throughout the country. And in order to be a sales coach here at IMS, not only do you have to talk the talk, but you have to walk the walk. And what I mean by that is all of these sales coaches are top producers in the industry. They're the upper 1% of commission and fee earners, and they're going to show you exactly what it is they do in their daily practices to make them so successful and give you the ability uh, to take that home with you and implement it in your practice. 
very, very lucrative. Now, before I move on uh, from this slide, I'd be amiss if I didn't get uh, get some commentary from Mac. Mac and Athena have been great partners to us over the years with these academies. Uh, Mac, anything you'd like to add about it? Yeah, sure, Scott. Thanks for uh, the opportunity to say a few words on this topic. You know, I think from from my perspective, I think the benefits are clear. You know, as as a carrier representative or vice president of sales, you know, just having producers into the office, kicking our tires is always great. Uh, breaking bread with them, learning you know about their business, they can learn about us. I, I think from those of you on the call listening here today, though, if we look at look at the same um, you know set of circumstances through your shoes. You know, Scott mentioned the sales coaches. That's great. Uh, what I love about this business, and I've been doing this a long time, almost 20 years, and I've traveled all over the country and, and met and worked with a lot of different advisors and producers. And, you know, they're from different parts of the country. They, they approach their businesses differently. Yep, they're all successful. And that's what I think is great. So you're going to hear from us. You'll hear from the sales coaches, absolutely. But there's enough downtime, I think, built into these meetings where you can learn from one another. And I think the environment that IMS creates is one of collaboration, not competition. So um, I think that's a great thing. So as much as you'll hear and learn from the folks that are on the main stage, you know, I love the, what you learn from one another at lunch, at breakfast, at dinner. Uh, so if, if you have not entertained the idea of going to one of these academies, I would strongly recommend that you do that. So call Scott and he'll get you connected with that. Thanks, Scott. Hey, thank you very much for the commentary, Mac. And as always, thank you and Athene for the partnership. Moving on, last slide before I hand it over to Mac and a fun slide. Um, we have just closed down uh, qualification for the 2019 IMS Marketing Summit. Um, I've been working through the list of attendees uh, on this uh, diligently. It will be the largest uh, marketing summit that we've ever, ever had, and we're very, very excited about it. The reason why I left this slide in, I wanna make sure everyone is aware that as of July 1st, 2019, we began qualification towards the next marketing summit. Um, I can't tell you where that's gonna be. Um, I can't give you much detail on it as of yet, but I want everyone to know that every dollar you submit through IMES is working for you uh, towards our next marketing summit. And keep an eye out for emails from us. Uh, we will have some announcements coming out here very, very soon about locale, and qualification numbers. Um, that being said, oops, I'm gonna hand control over to Mac. Okay, great. Scott, if you would just verify, number one, that you can hear me, and number two, that you can see the slide on the screen. Yes, sir, I can see you, or I can see the screen, and we can hear you well. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Scott, for the introduction. Great job as usual. And thank you to everyone on the phone who's spending some time with us this morning. Uh, we'll take the balance of our time together here. Um, you know, we'll definitely save some time for questions. So if you have some, chat those into Scott. We can address those. Uh, really, and, and no topic is off limits as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm an open book. And uh, whether it's about the industry, the company, or me, I'm happy to answer anything. I think the topic of today is timely. You know, you have likely seen uh, some pretty dramatic changes across our industry over the last, call it 60 days, uh, in terms of what has happened with rates. They've clearly come down across the board. You know, we, we had a theme made some adjustments towards the end of June. Some carriers actually adjusted towards the end of May, and some are still yet to adjust, and, and but will be most assuredly. And, um, you know, the reasons are, I, I believe, are, are pretty clear, but they're not always talked about. So we can certainly spend some time on that. Um, but I think, again, it's timely, the topic here, because at the end of the day, what we're offering, what you offer to your clients each and every day are truly valuable products. So even in a decreasing rate environment, uh, these products still have opportunity to provide some tremendous upside for both accumulation and income needs for your clients and prospects. And what we're going to do over the next, call it 25 minutes or so, is really talk about why strategies in our marketplace have changed over the last really decade and where they're headed and uh, again, why they're a great value proposition today, even with rates. And, and I, I promise you, I will get to some rate discussion as well at the end and really give you some perspective as to what it means for the products that you sell, that we offer and that your clients purchase. So just, just a quick, um, 
a quick look, quick agenda here. You know, we're gonna we're gonna start kind of look, looking back at the basics. <clears throat> this idea of, of an index and an indexed annuity is really just a measuring stick, and I think that's an important term. <clears throat> we'll talk about sort of the evolution of these indices in our space. You know, when I started in the business. Uh, well, gosh, it was in the mid '90s, but when you know, which is actually, believe it or not, when the first index annuity started uh, with Sun Life or a little company at that point called Keyport Life, these things have evolved. You know, it used to be that you had caps, <clears throat> annual caps based on the S&P 500 that were you know eight, nine, ten percent. Now, given where rates are and how the, the sort of the, the bond yield curve is really inverted you know, rates are low and, and are going to continue to be low. And those eight, nine, ten percent caps 10 years ago are now like two, three or four. So how do we provide value to clients? So we're going to talk about how these indices have evolved to do just that. And then I'll give you sort of some of our insights at a theme as to why we believe these are valuable to everybody involved. So we're going to start quickly with uh, just sort of a spectrum of risk. And by the way, we can make these slides available to all of you if you'd like them. Just call Scott and his team and he'll send them out to you because they, I know they have them. So a spectrum of risk, here we have at the lower end, uh, just your straight, we call it a SPIA, your income annuity. This is typically very low risk, but if you look at the opposite axis, the Y axis, it's typically low return. Now the opposite end of that spectrum, we have what we see as the you know, more variable, it's the variable annuity, which offers you know, a much higher return potentially, but with that higher return potential comes typically a lot higher risk. You know, annuities 101 or indexing 101, we know that in, in a guaranteed SPIA, the risk is on the insurance company, part of their general account, whereas on the variable annuity, it's not in the general account. It's in a separate account. That risk is borne 100% by the client. And in the middle, we have sort of this fixed annuity. And then, again, the fixed indexed annuity, which is where roughly 90% of all of the feed sales go. And we were number two in the market last year, just about seven and a half billion, just to give you some perspective there. So a lot of premium dollars flowing into the index annuity chassis. And I think for good reason. You know, I mentioned rates are low. Well, I mean, the 10 year treasury dipped below 2% not too long ago. It's hovering just about two. That's still historically low, uh, even over the last century, believe it or not. And, and I think we're gonna, gonna be in this environment for quite some time. The reality is if you're in a low interest environment, a traditional fixed annuity is not going to pay you much. Now, on the flip side, the variable annuity, again, offers better returns, higher risk, but better returns. But these things are getting expensive. I mean, if, you, if any of you are on the phone registered or variably licensed or work for a broker dealer or perhaps have in the past, even if you're not, you probably run up against these things each and every day in your business. Customers are paying three, four. I've seen some as high as 5% in fees. So what we've seen over the last couple of years, in particular last year was the first year that indexed annuities outsold VAs, this convergence to the middle. You know, clients are sick of earning nothing in their savings accounts, their fixed annuities, their CDs, but they're also sick of paying a lot of fees and taking on risk. So we see the fixed indexed annuity is really the perfect marriage of both of those items, low risk, low fees, and better returns. Um, Again, even in this environment that we're in, where, where rates have come down recently across the board. So let's build sort of a fixed index annuity, and then we'll get to the strategy discussion. So sort of the bullseye of any fixed index annuity is this idea of protection. You know, no negative returns, no red numbers on statements, no numbers in parentheses, if you will. So there's going to be not, there, there isn't going to be an instance where a client's going to get a negative result in their index annuity as part of their, their product they bought. Around this idea of protection, so sort of the light blue circle is this idea of guaranteed growth. A lot of indexed annuities have some sort of guaranteed growth component. And then around that, which is the, where we're going to focus today, is this idea of potential growth, that yellow circle. Interest credits that are based in part on the performance of a market index. So let's take a look at a couple of different measuring sticks, so to speak. So number one there, that, that, that's really the idea of, of what an index does. That's an index uh, in a let's call it an annuity. Now we know that, it, that a pure index, as much as it could go up, it could also go down. That brings us to measuring stick number two here in the middle of the slide. This is essentially the insurer's protection in that index on your, for, for your client. Again, there's no downside you see there, only upside. Now, number three, measuring stick number three is basically the insurer's cost to insure that risk. Right, so we're going to make sure your client never takes a zero, or I'm sorry, gets below than a zero rather on their statement. But for that, we're going to limit what they receive on the upside. And that's sort of that dark blue 
area on that last measuring stick. So the first one, again, is the pure index. The second one is the idea of what the strategy will do in an indexed annuity. And the third is what it costs the carrier to provide that protection. We limit the upside for the client. I think that makes sense. Now, this idea of participation can be looked at in a lot of different ways. We're not going to spend a ton of time on this slide. If any of you have been selling, and I would imagine the majority of you had, indexed annuities really over the last two decades, you'll, you'll recognize these terms. But just really quickly, there's three typical components or different ways that a strategy can participate in an index. One would be a cap. If we have a strategy with a 4% cap, the index does eight, client gets four. Makes sense. Uh, interestingly enough, this idea of participation, the better the index does, the less the client effectively participates, which is an interesting concept. So if that index did four, the client basically participated in 100% of that index. If it does 12, they only participated in a third of that index. So that's, that's not really a home run strategy. We still see some of these strategies out there. Uh, we believe in a theme, they're valuable, but only, you know, I think when moderates, uh, when markets are moderate. The next idea or the next design is a spread. And that is that, you know, the index is going to do X. We're going to subtract the spread, call it 2% in this example, and the client gets the rest. So the market does eight, client gets six, market does 12, client gets 10. I think it's pretty simple there. And this last idea is really where we see a lot of the indices moving towards this idea of a, a pure participation rate. So there's going to be a percentage of participation that is set by the carrier. In this case, let's use 90%. The market does 10. Just to make the math easier for me, the client gets 9%. Makes sense. What I would recommend to all of you on the phone listening today, if you have a strategy in a company you're selling and a product, whether it's a fiend or any other company, make sure that you only have one moving part in that index, right? So we see a couple of strategies out there that may have a participation rate and a cap. What I would recommend, that, that's too many moving parts for, for my money, I, I believe. I think if you want to choose a strategy, make sure that you only have one of these moving parts within it. And again, what, I, what we've seen in the marketplace as index indices have evolved sort of to this alternative or uncapped design, we're getting away from caps and spreads and really getting towards this idea of a pure participation rate. And we'll come back to that in a minute. So what is an index? Let's define an index here. Basically, in its simplest terms, it's a measure of change in a securities market. It's a basket of securities right, that represent a particular market or at least a portion of it. We all know the big ones, S&P 500, Dow Jones, uh, Russell 2000. These are a couple different indices that people are using uh, that we see about as well. The next question I typically get from a lot of advisors when we talk about index annuities and the different indices that are within them is which one is best. Well, the reality is that what this chart shows you is a couple things. First and foremost, that blue line, at least it's blue on my screen, that takes a sharp dip in 2008 and nine. That's the pure S&P 500 index. These other three lines you see there are, believe it or not, they're alternative indices that we have in a themes portfolio that are based on the S&P 500, but have a lot less volatility, right? So this idea of volatility control, which we'll come back to, what that does is evens out the peaks and valleys. You can see that we started around the same place. We ended around the same place, a little higher, a little lower in some instances than the pure S&P but the ride was a lot smoother. And that's important for the carrier and for the client, which I'll get to in a minute. But to answer your question, which index is best, it really depends. And again, the takeaway from this slide, I hope that you will hear or notice is that if you're gonna sell an indexed annuity, whether it's with a theme or another company, I hope it's with a theme, of course, make sure the product you're selling has different options available to your client. In any given market scenario, some indices are gonna outperform others. So to have the ability to select multiple indices within one annuity, I think is a great thing. You know, I'm kind of old school. I still believe some of the money should be in a fixed account, believe it or not, particularly if you have withdrawals coming out of that thing. Um, but, you know, if you have a strategy that mirrors the S&P with less volatility, that's great. What about a strategy that has different asset classes that might zig when the market zags? I think that could be important, too. So, again, the takeaway here is just to make sure the product you're selling has options for both you and your client as they approach their different anniversaries. Far and away the most popular index to sort of use as a measuring stick in our business still is the S&P 500, and it makes sense. Uh, it's a broad-based composite of large cap U.S. companies. It's very recognizable. It's easy to track. It's in the paper. It's on the news every day. 
uh, believe it or not, this thing first appeared in indexed annuities in 1995. And again, that was that uh, indexed annuity issued by Keyport Life, for those of you that love, love trivia. Um, and even today, half the money of all indexed annuities still goes into a strategy that's based, at least in some part, on the S&P 500. So let's take a quick look at how things have evolved. Now, this slide is a little old, but I'll update the numbers for a year in a minute. Let's go back almost 10 years. First quarter of 2011, you see there the blue section, the dark blue. Two-thirds of every premium dollar that would go into an indexed annuity went into a strategy based on the S&P. You see we have a fair amount in the fixed account. Had this multi-index back in the days as well. We still have a few of those out there. But notice what's not there this alternative index idea or this uncapped alternative index, this idea of volatility controlled indices didn't even exist in 2011. Fast forward five years, they own 20% of the market. These days, every single new index you see a carrier develop is in that alternative index strategy, you know, segment. And again, we'll get to the reasons behind that in a minute. Today, here we are in 2019, we're probably almost 30, I'd say close to 40% of the market. But again, the S&P is still a huge chunk of that pie. So let's kind of get into this idea of what an alternative index is, how it works, why it's designed the way it is. Um, there's typically three parts. The constituents, in other words, what is it made up of? Is there a maintenance aspect to it? And is there a layer of risk control? If we compare just a traditional S&P 500 cap strategy, to an alternative index, you can see the key differences between the two. And you start to see why these differences make sense from both the carrier and the client's perspective. If we take just a regular capped S&P 500 strategy, in terms of what it's constituent, what it's made up of, well, it, first of all, it's 100% correlated with the index it's based on, right? If the S&P 500 goes up, that's gonna go up. If it goes down, it's gonna go down. Clearly there's gonna be a cap or some sort of participation rate involved, but it's 100% correlated with the index it's based on. With an alternative index, that might not be the case. We're seeing a lot of strategies develop that have not only S&P 500 exposure, but also different asset classes, commodities, bonds, cash exposure. The ability to have different multiple asset classes or indices is truly unique in the alternative index space, and we're seeing a lot of that happen. That gives the, the company and the client the ability to kind of zig when the market zags potentially, to help manage what could be a pretty, you know, pretty volatile position in just equities. Then is there any maintenance? I mean, a regular traditional index effectively has no maintenance. It's essentially a static index. Uh, many alternative indices, if, if we're talking about you know, multiple asset classes, there's a rules-based formula or algorithm that drives rebalancing or reweighting of that index based on volatility in the market. I don't want you to get the impression that there's some guy at a scene in a green visor making all these moves. This is a rules-based formula. This is automatic. It happens at the index level. Client never sees this. You never see this. What it does, though, is effectively smooth the ride out for the client. And then on top of that, is there a layer of risk control? With the traditional index, there typically is none, which is why rates are so low on traditional indices. With an alternative index, if there is a layer of risk control, what that does for the carrier Basically, we employ that to stabilize returns, to, to even out the peaks and valleys. And if we can manage volatility within that index, what that allows us to do is return it to the client with better rates. So what is it made up of? How does it work? How does it rebalance? And then ultimately, is there risk control? I think it's important to have a layer of risk control these days to help manage the risk on the carrier's perspective and help drive better rates to your clients. Here's just a few examples of these, uh, again, these three components in an alternative index. These are actual strategies that Athene employs in some of its products. The first one just looks at the top 75 highest quality U.S. dividend paying stocks. That's, that's kind of unique. It, it reweights quarterly based on a quality screen on, on those equities. And there is a layer of risk control on top of that, right, to help manage the peaks and valleys. The next one below that is very interesting, and we'll talk more about this one in a minute. It offers eight different asset classes that represent a globally diversified basket of equities, fixed income securities, as well as commodities. It rebalances, not quarterly, but daily. So if you're familiar with the idea of rebalancing, the more frequent you rebalance, the smoother the ride typically is. And again, that sort of helps with our risk control as well. 
So that's going to really offer the opportunity to, number one, have a smooth ride, have very good rates, consistent rates for the client. But the fact that you have different asset classes, if equities tank all of a sudden, this has the ability on a daily basis to go more into a fixed or a commodity position, to offer the ability for the client to zig when the market zags. So why consider alternative indices? Well, for diversification, to differentiate yourself from the competition, uh, you have, straight, instead of a straight equity, we could use multi-asset approaches. Instead of directly being correlated with the market, we could potentially be non-correlated for a portion of the client's assets as well. And then for volatility control. You know, this is going to provide a lot more predictable returns for us or the client, and that allows us to deliver better rates, which ultimately provide more value as the client earns more money. So we've built an indexed annuity. We, have, we know the idea is that you can't lose any money. So you know, a lot of people, when I deliver this presentation, they intuitively start to think, well, look, what, what, why, if I'm in a product that I know can't, I can't lose a dime, why would I sacrifice upside? Well, again, it's not what you earn, it's what you keep that counts, right? So if we have an index with no volatility control at all, which is represented on the, light, on the left side, if we can't control volatility at the carrier or index level, that's gonna make our options cost a lot more expensive, which is gonna make the rates for your client much lower. That means lower caps, lower participation rates. However, if we manage volatility, like we just described, we can return that same strategy to the client with better participation rates, allowing them to keep more of that upside. So that's why this notion of volatility control is so important, not only on the carrier side, but really from the client's perspective, it's gonna have them the ability to earn more money in an otherwise tough rate environment. So that's sort of a, a quick look on the evolution of indices. You know, We did go pretty quickly. I wanted to make sure that we had time for questions and I'll offer some more commentary as well, but I wanna kind of give you an idea of what we look at at a theme. You know, developing an index or what we're seeing even more now today is partnering with the different investment banks to help develop an index on our behalf. Um, it often gives us proprietary access. We look at really three primary things. Number one is, is it a strong design? You know, is, it, is it easy to hedge? Is it cost effective to hedge? Can we provide good value, good rates to the client? Number two, is it a good fit for what we already have? You know, the last thing that we want to do at Athene, or really any carrier, is develop, develop an index that mirrors one that we already have or resembles one we already have and ends up cannibalizing sales in that index. We want to make sure that we provide complementary strategies for you to offer to your clients. So we're going to have some that are home run type strategies that are going to do really well when the S&P and the market is up. We'll have others that will do well when the market is moderate. And frankly, we'll have some that do well when it's down when equities are down with all, with all the different multi-asset approaches that we have. And is it a solid value? I mean, what we've seen with a lot of these indices, as they have exploded onto the scene over the last six to eight years or so, a lot of these indices have short histories or no histories and some that are, that are available or just rolling out today. So carriers are forced to kind of hypothetically illustrate these. Now states allow us to do that, which is good, but, let me tell you, it's a lot easier to, to build an index at a company that looks good on paper based on what it did. It's a lot harder to buy, to, to develop one based on what it will do down the road. At Athene, we look at, again, that strong design. Is it a good fit for the company and the portfolio? And will it provide value to the client on a go-forward basis? It's great to illustrate well, but we like to deliver results as well down the road. That's way more important, I think, than what it illustrates at. And this is a lengthy process. You know, this takes six to sometimes as long as 18 months for us to vet indices and investment banks and strategies. And, and uh, you know, it's a very deliberate and thoughtful process that we do. So when you see a new index to roll out with, from, a, from a theme, just know that this is, the, this is what's behind it all. So again, why alternative and volatility controlled indices? Let's take a look at really two views. One is from the carrier's perspective. The other, what does that view look from the client's shoes? So from the carrier view, if we have volatility controls that hedge our costs, that provide lower and more predictable um, hedging costs for us, but we can return that to the client with higher participation rates and certainly more predictable renewal rates as well. 
you know, that's one thing that we didn't talk about yet, but I'm happy to answer any questions about it. As a theme, we sort of pride ourselves on our rate setting ability. You know, we're never going to buy business from the market and, and have to kill rates in years two and beyond. Uh, we try to keep the same options budget from, for our customers when they buy the thing from year to year to year. So if things are pretty predictable and, and behaving in the marketplace, that means that client can expect to get the same rates in years two, three, and beyond than they did in that first year. And I think we have a lot of integrity in that regard as well since the theme took over. Second thing, carriers can offer differential customer value, and now you've got the ability to do the same thing. Customers can now have real choices among indexed annuity strategies, not just one S&P strategy versus another S&P versus another S&P. And then ultimately, the, the indexed annuity, as we've seen, the upside potential is a lot more competitive, which offers much more upside for your clients. So I'm going to go back to this quick slide that we showed a version of a minute ago or a couple minutes ago. Remember, the blue line, that, that volatile-looking line you see that took a dip in 08, 09, that's the actual S&P 500. And this just kind of shows the effect of volatility control. That other lighter blue or maybe green line or teal, whatever color that is on your screen, that's the S&P 500 strategy with a layer of volatility control on one of our strategies. So you can see it did not experience you know, the peaks of 07, but it didn't experience the valleys of 08 and 09 either. And it's a much smoother ride, so the company provided better rates to your client, and they earned a lot more value. So if we look at this particular slide, we see we've, encomp we've encompassed almost 9, 10 years of market performance. This is if we were to look through a telescope, right, over 10 years. Now I want to do is look at the same set of circumstances through a microscope. We all remember, I know Brexit has come back into the news in the forefront over the last couple of months. But remember back when Brexit happened the first time? For those of you that don't know that term, that's when Great Britain decided to leave the EU. Think back to what the market did the week following that first Brexit discussion. The blue line is, again, the pure market, the S&P 500. It, was, it dropped 5% within two days, but like volatile markets often do, it rebounded and was almost back up to normal later that week. Well, again, notice if we have volatility controlled strategies, these this yellow and the green line, they also went down, but not nearly as much. You can see that we've eliminated the really the valley and, and, and trend is peak as well. However, this red line, this is the one that I mentioned before with the multi-asset classes. When things were going haywire in the equities marketplaces in the days following the Brexit announcement initially, this positioned itself more in fixed income and commodities, and you can see actually went up when the market was going down. So again, I go back to my, uh, again, I don't want to sound preachier, but I go back to what I said before. Make sure the product you're selling has indexes that can behave in all sorts of market environments so that you can put your clients in ideally several different indices at the same time, or at least have the ability to move in and out of them on anniversary. Just a quick word on illustrations. And you know, what to look for, you know, the good news is illustrations are getting a lot more, I think it's good they're getting a lot more regulatory sensitivity. I think we're getting some, uh, we're evening the playing field, which is great. A couple of carriers were showing some pretty, well, uh, I'll say aggressive illustrations, and we weren't sure that they were going to live up to what they showed. Uh, this is a quick exercise for you guys on the phone. Which product? These are income, annual income amounts. If you have a 55-year-old client, you defer for 10 years, which product would you, would you sell if you're the client or would you buy? Product one in 10 years provides 13.4 of annual income. Product two provides just over 9,000. Not a trick question. Clearly, you're going to choose product one. It provides $4,000 more annually. The reality is these are identical products. They just had different starting dates of which they show the illustration. So if you're looking at a company, or you're looking at a product, ask them how they illustrate, what, what methodologies do they use, how far back do they go, how many market cycles are they using. Now those are, these are important questions to ask the company you're doing business with to make sure that the illustrations you're showing can actually live up to those down the road. Um, so, you know, with that, what I'd like to do, and, and Scott, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you in a moment. You can actually take control of the drop, but I do have a few more words to sort of close my portion, and we can pause for questions if you want. Um, we have seen a lot of rates go down, right? And again, a theme is not immune to that. We had other carriers react as well. Um, but I want to give you some perspective, right? So I've got some. I, I've got the ability to see 
uh, actually a theme indexed returns almost on a daily basis. We don't pr promote those because we all know things can change in the market, right? But I'll, again, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go through this exercise just to give you some perspective. So if you were to see, uh, I'm gonna look at one of our, our products, one of the more, one of the industry's best selling products for accumulation needs is our performance elite product. And if we look at our seven year product, again, the rates are what they are. Um, one of our most popular strategies, and this is the one that I would call sort of our home run strategy, if you will, is the Janus or Sock Gen Index. Year to date, so again, if, 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 you know, if we look at the S&P year to date, year to date the S&P is about 18% in the positive. That's a pretty good darn year for the S&P. You know, we've had a lot of great market uh, gains over the last several years. Uh, first six months are no exception. Believe it or not, the the um, the Janus or Sock Gen index is actually better than the uh, than the S and P a year to date. It's actually twenty percent on a gross basis. Now again, that's on a gross basis. We have to apply a participation rate, and based on the current rates that we're providing to our clients today on that product on an annual basis, if we were to lock in today, the client's going to earn over eight percent. That's not bad through six months and a fixed annuity. If you think about it, there's no risk. So I would sell that all day long. I thought, you know, do it. we're not looking to get S&P gains, but if I can get my customer better than three, four, five, or six percent in a given year without taking on any risk, that's a home run. If you look at a two-year point, a two-year point to point. Now, over the last two years, that index is up actually 30 percent based on the two-year rates we have right now on that product. That would give the client a 21 percent rate of return. So again, I want to reiterate. Here's my disclosure. This is one point in time I'm talking about here. Where we, clearly, there's going to be different issue dates and starting values for your clients, depending on when they buy them. But I think it's important for everyone to understand that even though rates are coming down, these strategy designs allow for great value, even when rates don't seem to be as high as they once were. I mean, we're talking 8%, 20%. Uh, now, again, would I put all my clients' money in that strategy? Absolutely not. That's our home run strategy. When the S&P is doing well, like it is, that's going to do very well. Um, I'll give you another example. The BNP, for instance, which is our multi-asset class one, because that provides a lot more balance, a lot more volatility control, we can provide better rates for the client. Now, the index itself is not going to be your home run index. It's never going to do as well as the stock gen on a gross basis. But at the end of the day, if, you know, if we stop today, your client's going to earn 6 or 7% after we apply the rates of the product because that index has done well. You know, uh, again, it's, it's been able to go into different strategies, different commodities, different asset classes when markets have kind of gone down. And again, it still has an equity component as well. You know, ultimately, again, if we look at the index, the, the industry, I think we're faced with this environment for quite a little time here. Um, you know, what's frankly, what's worse, I think, than having rates that are low is having the yield curve be inverted. Uh, you know, we have a three-month T-bill higher, 20 bips higher than a 10-year. That's, that's unusual. And, you know, if, you, if you're a market student, like I, I like to think I am, um, now whether I'm not or is you're, is you're you know, open to discussion, but, um, you know, this is just back talking here. I, you know, in, in, inverted yield curve, more importantly, how long that curve stays inverted typically means when the next recession happens or market correction. And I'm here to say, even if, you know, when things are good in the market, when things are decreasing in the market from a rate perspective, when things are correcting, the index annuity, I think, is one of the best products to have, no matter what the environment is. So, Scott, I'll turn it back over to you. I'm happy to take any questions about the environment we're in, about the products, about the concepts we've talked about, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll close it from there. Thank you, Mac. Great presentation. As always, great information. We really do appreciate it. I do have a couple of questions that came in, but before I pose those questions to you, I want to launch our last poll of the day, just asking if you'd like more information on a theme. Um, if you are not appointed with a theme or uh, if you're not familiar with a theme, I'd tell you to click yes. As you can see, very, very in-depth company. Not a lot of carriers out there would take the time to put together a presentation like this and authorize one of their RVPs to go this in-depth into sheer index design. So 
definitely a company that uh, if you're not familiar with, you should be. If they're not in your arsenal, uh, I definitely encourage you to have them there. They are a leader in fixed indexed annuities um, and, and just a great partner to have on your side. Uh, Mac, first question that came in, and I don't know how in-depth we can get to this. Um, I don't know if there is any real answer to it, but I'll put it to you anyway. Um, really asking about, uh, you know, Powell's up uh, speaking to Congress today. There's a lot of talk about the Fed uh, possibly cutting back interest rates. What kind of effect would that have on Athene's ability uh, or anybody's ability, I guess, uh, with their index offerings, if you can answer that? Yeah, well, I'll do my best. And again, this is uh, again this full disclosure. This is Mac talking out of theme. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm not an economist. I did study it in college, but that's about the extent of it. Uh, I've been around the block a while, so like I, you know, I will tell you based on conversations that I've had within my home office and some of the senior execs and some of the pricing folks. And this is not immune to a theme, by the way. So, you know, if we see interest rates, I mean, the scary thing for any anyone pricing product is, you know, to be a in a in a lengthy extended uh, low interest rate environment, which which we've lived within. And we've, we're learning to live within that. We're, as we just discussed, we've got pricing tools that we can use to still provide value to clients with these strategies. What scares us and what we've seen in lo all over Europe, frankly, I mean, look at Germany. Um, Germany's 10 years negative. Now think about that. Clients are paying to save money, basically which is insane to think about. Um, it used to be the other way around. You used to earn interest when you say, when, when you, you know, lent it to the government, now you're, you're paying to do that. So I think that's the fear that a lot of carriers have is that we get into a similar set of circumstances. I don't think that we will, um, but to, I guess to more directly answer your question, if, if rates come down further, it will absolutely affect rates that you see, not so much renewal basis, but certainly new money. I mean, again, we've seen some adjustments down you know, it wasn't that long ago, I want to say four, five, six months ago, where the 10-year yield was almost 3.2%. Now we're at two. Um, that's a 30% decrease in five months. If we see something similar, then I would expect further rate decreases. But again, that's not just at my company. It's pretty much everywhere. Um, time will tell. Time will tell. That, that's, that's just my two cents. Hope, Scott, hopefully that gives you some perspective. Sure. sure. I mean, that... That's a big question, <laughs> you know, a lot of variables inside that question. So I appreciate your your willingness to tackle tackle it and answer it to the best uh, best that we can shake the magic eight ball and see what's going to come back. Um, last mm -hmm. question I've got, Mac. Last question that came in. I think it's a really really good question. Um, talking about uh, income products in general um, and, and the shift towards participating income or stacked income. Uh, just looking for a little insight on on, on how indices and, and the effect on that. You know, just a real general question, but if you, I know Athena has some no, really yeah, great qu products on that, so if you could tackle that, that'd be great. Ha yeah, happy to, Scott. That that is a good question. I'm, gl I'm actually I'm glad that came up because I actually had it on my list to kind of go through when I was talking about returns. And so I, I um. I think an income rider sale is right for many instances. Um, you know, as, as the question alludes to, there's typically two ways that the client can earn value there. There's a guaranteed roll-up, and I'll give you an example on a themes portfolio. We have a 10% simple roll-up on our Sun Pro for 10 years, and it goes to 5% thereafter. You know, that's great. I think that design is simple. It's easy to understand for clients, so that 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 makes the sale in theory a little easier to to, to make happen. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's right for everybody. You know, I think that's certainly appropriate for people that are older or perhaps need money uh, more immediately, say in the first couple of years of the contract. You know, if we're only talking two, three years before they know they have to trade that income, just give them the 10% simple guarantee. Don't, don't guess with the market over two to three years. However, you start going into year five, year six of deferral and beyond, one thing the market has taught us, as volatile as it can be, it's typically up more than it's down. And with an indexed annuity chassis, you know, what's always interested me, Scott, is how advisors will sell indexed annuities for accumulation. But when they go to sell them for income purposes, they pick the guaranteed rider. Like that tells me they trust the growth for accumulation, but not for income. And I think there's a ton of value, again, even in today's low rate environment, uh, to using these participating riders, particularly if your client is one of two things, a little younger, 
and by younger, I mean even in their early 60s or so, uh, or if they have, say, five, six years or so before they got to tap that income, uh, I'll give you a good example. So the, the product that I just mentioned you know, you know, has a guaranteed rider. It rolls up at 10% simple. The other option in, in that product, if the client elected it at issue, would have the, be the participating one, where, where there's still a guaranteed roll-up. I think, again, I, I believe it's 7%. So it's lower, right? But what we do is basically take any growth that they earn in the index, double it, and stack it on top of that 7%. So again, using the same interest rates that we have available today, or rather rates on the products, and I think I used, again, I used the SOC Gen Index as the example. Um, that roll-up would be almost 19%. So we take the seven, they would earn 6%, we double that to 12. So we'd add 12 to seven, that's 19% roll-up in a year. So to me, clearly, if again, short over shorter periods of time, I would recommend even going the guaranteed route, but if you've got four or five years of horizon or beyond, talk to your clients about the participating strategy because I think it's where the market's going. I think it provides a ton more value for the clients. Um, anyway, Scott, that's my two cents, but I, that, what we're starting to see is a shift to the participating story. And I think it's for good reason. I think that's where the value really lies for clients that have time on their hands. So I hope that helps. It does. It does. And and we wholeheartedly agree with you that that's, we're starting to see the uh, the market shift in that direction. Um, I'm happy somebody asked that question so I can put in a shameless plug here. Uh, if you're not familiar with participating income, Laura Johnson in my office has a webinar coming up uh, tomorrow, I believe, on participating income to kind of go through um, some of the different options that are out there. I'd highly encourage you to check in on that. Uh, with that being said, that does bring us to uh, right at our hour, so I will wrap things up here. I do want to thank each and every one of you for uh, taking the uh, taking the time uh, to join us here. We know an hour spent uh, with us is an hour where you're not out actively selling or prospecting, so we really, really do appreciate it. Mac, I also want to thank you. I know an hour of your day is a lot to ask, so we, we really do appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Campbell, any parting words for the group before we sign off? No, just, uh, again, thanks for your attention today. Uh, happy to learn more about each and every one of you. Talk to the folks at IMS, get to know them better. And, you know, again, no matter what the market you know, throws at us, we're going to perform for you and your clients. So I uh, look forward to working with all of you and have a, have a great day. Hey, thank you, Mac. And thank you again, everyone. Go out, have a great sales day, and I look forward to speaking with each and every one of you very soon.